Before we start working with the tabs within a Microsoft Word document, we really want to understand what tabs are all about. You're going to find that using tabs inside of a document can really apply to many different scenarios. In this case, I've got the example file open in front of you. It comes with this lecture. You can download it and follow along with me. It's called 10wordtabs.docx. It's a Microsoft Word document. And in this example, I've created a little contacts list. And this is just one scenario where you could use these Microsoft Word tabs. But the idea of a tab is to allow consistency throughout the layout of your document or throughout a small portion of your document, such as this little contact list right here. And what I mean by consistency in the layout, this list has two columns. It's got a name column and it's got an email column. Now, in order for me to create this, I've got really a couple different routes that I can take. I could jump down, type in Joe, and then hit my space bar a bunch of times on my keyboard to get the space that I need between the name column and the email column. And then I drop down to the next row, type in Brent, and then I'd hit my space bar a bunch of times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You ever do that before? To be able to create a bunch of space to get to the next column. Well, this creates a little bit of inconsistency in the layout of the document because you may not be hitting the space bar the proper number of times. You may have to delete spaces or add more spaces to be able to create the same consistency and layout in the space between these two columns. Well, tabs fix this problem. Now, by creating what we call tab stops, I use my tab key on my keyboard. That's why they're called tab stops. You use your tab key. I tap, tap the tab key once and it jumps to a predetermined location inside the document. In this case, it moves me all the way from the name column to the beginning of the email column. And it's nice and clean, a nice clean straight line right there inside that column. And I can keep creating additional columns here. Maybe I'm gonna have a department column or a position column or whatever we're gonna have there. But I would create an additional tab stop that when I hit my tab key on my keyboard, it would jump over to that location within the document and create that nice clean line, that nice clean layout within my list. Now, before I can start working with tab stops, you have to activate the ruler. So I'm gonna go up to my view tab, top of my screen, and I'm gonna make sure I turn on ruler. Now, when I activate that, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight my little list here, just so you can see. Up inside the ruler, and it's really small, but there's what looks like a little L right there, little black L. That's my tab stop, and it's sitting there right at the two inch mark. And that, if I could draw a straight line, is right in line with my email section. Okay. So now every time I hit my tab key, it jumps me right to that two inch mark, right to that two inch mark. No matter how big the first name is here, I could drop down a line. Uh, here is another name. Now that's much larger, but when I hit my tab key, it takes me right to that spot, that two inch marker right there. So this is what I'm gonna have you experiment with, and we're gonna talk all about this. We'll see how to create tab stops, how to place them up inside your ruler, how to then utilize them to create that layout within your list or within your document, somewhere within there. All right, so let's create some of our own tab stops here. So a couple of things. One, I've got the number 10 Word Tabs document open in front of me. Again, make sure you download this and follow along with me. It's part of the previous lecture. Uh, and two, let's make sure that the ruler is turned on. And as a reminder, I went to View, top of my screen, View, and I activated the ruler. All right, I'm going to scroll down inside the document. I'm going to get to this section called Try It Below. This is where I'm going to have you do a little bit of practice. So first off, let's recreate that contact list that's just directly up above. So I'm just going to type in contact here, contact list. Let's make it look the same. Contact list, hit my enter key, I'll drop down a line. Maybe I want to format that, I'll just make it bold. Control B being your bold shortcut key. And now I want to start creating these two columns, name and email, and put in my entries. 
Maybe we'll add a third column just to mix it up. We'll do like position or department or whatever we want to put over there. All right, so first one, I'm gonna put name in there. I'll go ahead and type in name. Now, if I hit my tab key right now, this is just default behavior inside of a Microsoft Word document. I tap tab, it only moves me just a little bit. Let me actually turn on, if I go to my home tab and activate the paragraph markers or the formatting markers, you can see I hit my tab key, it's got that little arrow in there. But you'll notice up here, there's a lot more space in between those tabs that I used here. Default behavior inside of a Word document, the tab key just wants to move you half an inch. Well, I want to go much further than that. So let me delete that tab, I'll backspace back out. Now with my ruler active, on the far left, I see my current tab stop, or the specific type of tab stop that I'm currently gonna use. This is called a left align tab stop. Now I'm gonna leave it just at that for right now, but just know that there are a handful of different types of tab stops, and they really deal with alignment. But for right now, we're gonna use a left align tab stop. I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the two inch marker of my ruler, and I'll click once, just a normal left click. And that places my tab stop. I've now got that little L denoting the left align tab stop. So now I come back down where I got name at, I'll tap my tab key once, and that hops me all the way over to that two inch marker. And I can put an email. Now if I hit my tab key again, it's now back to just that little half inch marker to the closest inch or half inch marker inside the ruler. Now I want to be able to move all the way over, let's say I wanna move all the way over to the four inch, or let's say four and a half inch. So let me backspace that back out. Again, I got my left align selected. I'll go to the four and a half inch mark. I'll click once and I'll place that left align tab stop again. Tap my tab key and let's put position in here. There we go. I've got my two tab stops, one at the two inch mark and one at the four and a half inch mark. And each time I hit my tab key, depending on where I'm at or where I've already within the ruler, it'll jump me to the appropriate spot. Now let's continue this list. I'll hit my enter key, drop down a line. Let's put somebody in there. I'm just gonna repeat the same. I'll say Joe, tab, jumps me over to the email. So here's Joe at center.com. Hit my tab key again. Joe is at the uh, center position. Hit my enter key and I can keep going with this list, inserting all these individuals into my contact list. And now I've got this nice clean layout, right? Consistency, hit my tab key, jumps me over to the two inch. Hit my tab key again, jumps me to the four and a half inch. Now, if you've ever created a list like this and used your space bar or multiple tabs, you can maybe get something like this, but it's gonna take a lot of work. And you're gonna get inconsistency in how many spaces or how many tabs you're pressing to get to a specific spot. Here, I know I hit once, it gets me to the two inch. I hit it again, gets me to the four and a half inch. Nice and clean. So try this out. So now that you've got your tab stops built into your Microsoft Word document and you've got that consistency of spacing between the columns of your data, now I wanna go in there and begin to format these tab stops. I'm gonna introduce you to a concept called tab leaders. This is probably something that you've already experienced, whether it was inside of a Word document or inside of some other type of material, maybe a printed book. If you open up a book and you go to the table of contents, maybe inside of a textbook or whatever you got, uh, you're gonna see something very similar to what we have on the screen here. You're gonna have columns of data. You've got the table of contents and you've got your main topics, maybe perhaps on the left-hand side or whatever, whatever direction, and then you've got page numbers associated with those topics. Now, in many cases, between those two columns, the topic and the page number, you're gonna have maybe little dots that'll lead you across the page from the topic to the page number, or maybe it's just a, a solid line. And it helps connect, it helps lead the eye from the topic to the page number. And these are called tab leaders. So I wanna introduce you to how we can create, I'm gonna turn off the uh, show hide, the paragraph markers here, show you how to create these tab leaders 
So we can create these lines or dots that take us from, I'm not doing a very good job there, from the one value or one column to the next column, whether it's a single line or dots. Let's see how to do this. All right, so my first step, uh, I've got the example file back open and I've elaborated a little bit more on that table that we started creating in the previous lecture. Got a few more names in there, got three columns. So my first step is I'm gonna highlight all of the names, emails, and positions that I have in this list. Now I've highlighted those and I've left off the headers because I don't want to put the leaders, I don't want to put the lines or the dots in between the headers. I just want to do it between the actual name and email and the actual email and the position value. So with that highlighted, I'm now going to go up to my home tab. I'm going to go into the paragraph section, but I'm going to go down to this little button in the corner. It looks like a little right angle with an arrow attached to it. I'm going to give that a click and this is going to open up my formatting options. But down at the bottom, lower left corner, you've got your tab formatting options. So I'm going to give tabs a click. Now inside of here, I can see a few things happening. I've got my two tab positions that I created earlier. Remember, I got one at the two inch marker. There's my two inch tab stop. And I got one at the four and a half inch mark. There's my four and a half inch tab stop. Now down below, they tell me what alignment those tabs are using. We've really only talked about the left align at this moment. And then we've got the leader associated with that tab stop. Default, you have no leader. We can see in the background that it's just empty space between the columns. So I'm going to say I'm going to grab my two inch mark. I'm going to come down and I want to do the uh, dotted line or the little dots. So I'm going to do number two and I'm going to set it. Now I'm going to do the same thing with four and a half. I'll grab four and a half. It's a left align and I can come down and pick which type of leader I want. I'm going to be consistent about it. So I'll grab the number two again. I want to encourage you, experiment with the different types. It's just formatting its preference, whatever makes it easier for you to read or your audience to read. Remember, this just leads you from one value in the list to the next value. And I'll set it. And that's it. You select your tab stops that were already defined. You, you can change the alignments, but I'll leave them at the default and left align, which is what I got here. And then you could pick the leader. Make sure you set it after you've chosen the leader. I'll hit OK. And I've now got the leaders inside of my list. Going from the left hand side of my page all the way over to the two inch marker, I got the dots. I type in the email, hit the tab key again, takes me to the four and a half, I got the dots. Let's try adding somebody else. I'll hit my enter key here, drop down a line. Let's put somebody old school in here. I'm gonna say Owen, Owen Nolan. Let's hit my tab key, jumps me right to that two inch mark, and I've got the dots already given to me. There comes Owen at center. Hit my tab key again. Jumps me right over. Gives me the dots automatically. Very cool, but a nice visual to help lead the eye from one column to the next. You got dots, you got solid line, you got a little hyphen line as well. Try this out. Remember, select all the data first. Get all the lines selected that you want to add the leaders to. Go up to home. Go into that funny little button in the corner of paragraph. Down in the lower left corner, you'll find tabs, where you'll find all the settings for your tabs. Experiment with it. Get a feel for working with these tab leaders and formatting your tab stops. So you've built on your tab stops. You've got tab stops inside your document. You've been able to add tab leaders to those tab stops and get a little bit of formatting and style in there. Now I want to show you a couple of techniques that you can use to modify these tab stops. First off, let's talk about modifying the placement or position or spacing that these tab stops have. So I've still got the example file open in front of you. Uh, and I've still got the existing list that I've started to build here. So my first step, I want to change the spacing that we have here. Right, right now I'm going to two inches and then I'm going to four and a half inches. Okay, but I want to I want to stretch this out a little bit. I want to take the center position and perhaps I want to move it closer to the right hand side to the margin of this page. And I want to take email and I'm going to put that more towards the center of the page. 
Well, this is really simple to do. In olden days, before knowledge about tab stops were introduced, you'd sit there and hit your space bar a few more times, place your cursor in there, and space, 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 or tap, 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 to be able to move stuff around, and you're kind of joggling back and forth, trying to get stuff to look just right. Well, here, I'll highlight all those lines again, get all the entries within my list, and now all I do is go up to my ruler, find the little tab stop, and you have to be right on top of that. If you're just barely off, just a little bit, you might accidentally add another tab stop. So make sure you're right on top of it. I'm going to left click, and I'm going to drag it. And you'll see as I'm dragging that, I'm moving the position of that tab stop. But if you look closely, and I need to put that back, you'll see that I'm moving all the entries, but I'm not moving the header. Email just stays put. Why is that happening? Well, let me put that back. Back to two. Why did that happen? Well, all I highlighted was the entries. I need to highlight the headers. So I'm going to come back in here. I'll left click and drag it everything. And now I'll go move that little L. Let's move that over. Let's say I'm going to put that at the two and a half inch mark. And I'm going to come down. Let's say I'm going to grab the four and a half. I'll drag that one over. Let's bring it over to like the five and a half inch mark. And now I've got a little bit more space. Takes up more of the width of that page. Now I'm seeing something that happened here. When I started manipulating those tab stops, including the headers, my leaders went away. Hmm, that's kind of a bummer. I'm imagining they went away because the headers didn't have them. And I manipulated both of them. Not just the entries inside the list, but the headers moved as well. So jump back in there. If the same thing happened to you, jump back in there, add the leaders back in. But really quickly, you can manipulate the spacing of those tab stops. Just highlight the entries that you want to manipulate. Go up above, left click, and drag those tab stops around. Get them in the position that you want them to be in, and let go. And you're done. Try it out. Now that you've got the document looking good, and you got that consistency of spacing between your tab stops, you got your leaders in there for a little bit more styling and formatting and readability. Now you want to be able to remove tab stops. Take a look. This is really simple. So I've got a nice little list going on here with a few contacts. I get into my list. Let's say I get to the end. I'm sitting there on center. I hit my enter key, drop down a line. Here I am. Like it wants to insert a new record or a new item into my contact list. You'll notice that my tab stops are still there right we saw that earlier I hit my tab key right now and it automatically jumps me all the way over to the what is that two and three quarters inch mark okay. well I don't want that to happen anymore I want to remove the tab stop okay. all I need to do is move up to that little L left click hold down and just drag it off the ruler and it's gone I'm gonna come up here and do the same thing I'll grab this one and just drag it down and off the ruler and I've now removed the tab stops. If I hit my tab key now, down here at the bottom, it moves me that half inch. Tab, 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 just back to normal tabs now. I go back and turn on the little paragraph markers, and now I've got multiple tabs there. Again, all you need to do, find the tab stop up above, left click, and just drag it off. Make sure you're right on top of that little tab stop. Again, if you're next door to it, you might accidentally add another tab stop. Within Microsoft Word, there's a handful of different types of tab stops that you can use. What we were looking at earlier was the default tab stop called the Left Align Tab Stop. And it really just dealt with the alignment of the content placed within that tab stop. I want to show off here where you can find the different types of tab stops and how you can use them to your advantage within your document. Now open in front of you, I've got the new exercise file that comes with this video. It's number 11, Other Word Tabs. And I've got a little bit of a reminder about different types of tab stops. Uh, I'm going to be working inside this inventory list, and I've got a section down below where you can try it out. You can try out doing the work on your own. Okay. All right, inside this list here, I've got three column headers, product name, price, and manufacturer. And you can see up above, 
that I've got two left aligned tab stops. Just placing the price and the manufacturer. One at the two inch mark and one at the three and a half inch mark. Now, we know if I come over here and I hit my enter key, I'll drop down to the next line and I've still got those tab stops. Two inch mark and three and a half inch mark. Which is great, I can start typing in here and it becomes left aligned. So let's say we got oranges, hit my tab key, jumps me over to the left uh, two inch marker. I'll put in a price, let's say that these are a three dollars a bundle or whatever um, but it is left aligned at that spot right it's nice and clean nice and left aligned on the two inch marker if I now hit my space bar or my tab key again jumps me over to the three and a half inch mark and let's say Florida is the manufacturer again it's left aligned well we've got different types of tab stops let me undo that so I'm gonna get rid of these I'm just going to pull these off of that new line that I got there. Let's just left click and drag those off. Now if I come over to the left hand corner of my ruler, I'll find my initial tab stop, the left align tab. But if I left click on that, it'll cycle through the different types of tab stops. That one there looks kind of like an upside down T. That's a center tab. If I tap it again, that's a backwards L. It's a right align tab. And if I keep tapping, it'll go through all the different types of tab stops. And there's a few of them there. I've listed out the common ones. Left, right, center, and decimal. So left align, right align, center align, and decimal will align your values to the decimal. So let's, let's try a couple of them here. I'm going to leave this one at a product name at a left align tab. But the price, I'm going to imagine I'm going to have decimals in there like $3.25, uh, $4.50, and so on. So I'll have a, a dot, a decimal in there. So I'm going to change my tab type here. I'm going to find the decimal. It's the upside down T with a little dot next to it. And I'm going to come over to, oh, I'm going to do it right about the two and a quarter inch mark. There's my tab stop. It's a decimal tab. So now I put in a product, let's say oranges again. I hit my tab key, it jumps me over. You can see that I'm now no longer left aligned with that price there, but I'm now right in the center of that one. And if I type in 3.25, it will align to that decimal. Now if I were to keep going, and I want to do it just yet, I keep putting more prices in there, it'll make sure that all the prices are lined up on that decimal. Now let's add another one here, let's do manufacturer, but just for fun, I'm gonna cycle through here. I'm gonna find the right align. Nope, I passed it. Let's go through there again. I'm just left clicking up there. I keep passing it. It's the backwards L. There it is. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna place this one at about the uh, almost the four and three quarters inch mark. I just wanna get right to the end of that manufacturer roughly. And if I hit my tab key again, it'll jump me all the way over there. And this time I'll type in Florida, but it's now right aligned, right aligned. I'm gonna move that over just so I'm right in even with that manufacturer. There we go. I'm off just a little bit, but let's hit my enter key again. Let's say we got uh, grapes. These are gonna be, these are more expensive. I'll say it's $10.75, but look at that. Even though I got more, digits on the left hand side of that decimal it still lines up with that decimal hit my tab key again let's say this is uh napa california uh, right aligned again different tab stops always about hitting your tab key getting to a specific location within the document but changing the alignment whether you're going to do decimal alignment right alignment left alignment center alignment you got a couple different ones in there, and I, I want to encourage you to experiment with them. Just go up to that left-hand corner, give it a left click, and you'll cycle through the different types of tabs. Try it out.